Hello and welcome to Master Prodigy. This is the first in a series of video tutorials on LaTeX. LaTeX is a document markup language and is used to create technical documents. LaTeX is a very powerful typesetting tool and is used to write books and reports. It is especially handy for creating documents containing mathematical notation. First of all, Something that confuses many people when they first hear the name is the pronunciation. The software is pronounced LaTeX, not LaTeX, as you might first think. In order to use LaTeX, you need to install two free software packages. The first is a LaTeX distribution. It turns your code into a readable document. The LaTeX distribution I use is MicTeX which is for Windows, since I am on Windows. If you are on a Mac and you have Mac OS, you can use MacTech. The second software you need to install is a LaTeX text editor, which is used for writing your code. I use Tech Studio, but an alternative is Tech Maker. And Tech Studio and Tech Maker is both for Windows and Mac OS, I believe. So the order in which they should be installed is first the LaTeX distribution and then after that you install the LaTeX text editor. So let's get on to installation. Okay, so here we are at the CTAN website. Uh, we are going to download the package called ProText, which is a MicTech based tech installation for Microsoft Windows. This contains the LaTeX distribution MicTech as well as the text editor called uh, Tech Studio, which is what I use. So we just click on this link here and then it will start downloading. So this will take a while, so we just have to wait a bit. Okay, so after the file has been downloaded, just go to show in folder to where the file has been saved and then just right click and click on extract here to extract the components of the file. Okay, and then after the extraction is complete, you will see that there is a MicTech folder as well as a Tech Studio folder. We first need to install MicTech. So we can just go to Setup. The first one is for a 32 bit operating system, and the second one is for a 64 bit operating system. But you can just install the first the first setup which is which basically works for 32 and 64 bits so I'm just gonna go ahead and install that one just click I accept it is not necessary to change any of these settings the default settings are all fine you can just start installing that so this installation will take about 20 minutes which is quite a long time there's a lot of files that need to be installed Then after we have installed MicTech, we just click next and then close. Now we could have also installed MicTech from the MicTech website, but this installation is a basic MicTech installation and you can see that the file size is only 191 megabytes, whereas the MicTech version we installed you will see that the file size is about two and a half gigabyte. That is because this version we installed is a full version of MicTech, whereas this is only the basic version of MicTech. You can install the basic version of MicTech as well. Um, I just would not be able to guarantee that it would have all the required packages 
necessary for your documentation. So you can install this version and then just update the packages as you need them. You can update the packages by going to start menu and then programs and then looking for MiGTEK 2.9 and in MiGTEK 2.9 you'll be able to go to maintenance and then go to MiGTEK update. So here in, in MiGTEK update you can update the packages and install um, extra packages as you require but since I already have the full I just installed the full version of MiGTEK this won't be necessary for me so then we can go ahead and install Tech Studio so here is a a Tech Studio installation file so I I don't know if this is the f the, the latest version of Tech Studio so I would just rather go to the Tech Studio website and download Tech Studio from there because then I at least know that I do get the latest version of Tech Studio. And if we also scroll down here, you will see that Tech Studio can be installed on Windows, of course, as well as Linux and Mac OS. I do not know which latex distribution you would require for Linux but but a few seconds of googling you will be able to quickly find that out so yeah I'm just gonna click on the download link for Windows and then it will start downloading all right so after the Tech Studio installation file has been downloaded. We can install Tech Studio. And once again, it is not necessary to change any of these settings. We can just go ahead and install it with all the default settings. And then we can click finish and it will start up Tech Studio for us. And there we go. This is Tech Studio. This is the space we'll be working on. So before we can start typing in any code, we first need to create a new file. Every document always starts with the command document class. And as you can see, as I start typing, um, Tech Studio already suggests the command for me. So you can click there and double click on it, then it will automatically complete the command. So the first set of brackets is a, a square brackets, and we usually type in there the font size. For now, I'm just going to choose 12 point font size and in the second set of brackets it's a type of document you can have an article or you can have a book but for now I'm going to type in report as the type of document I want I'm just going to enlarge the text a bit this is the default theme which is a small text so I'm just going to change the size to 12 point on the editor and in general going to change the font size to 10. That makes the font a little bit bigger for you guys to see because I know YouTube compresses the quality of a video. And then after the document class command, we type in the command begin and then in curl brackets document. And when I press enter, you will see that Tech Studio um, automatically also adds the closing statement for the begin document command. Okay, so a later command always starts with a backslash. So in the document class command, with the first set of square brackets, you insert the first parameters, and in the second 
um, set of curl brackets, you insert the second set of parameters. And then the begin document and end document command. You can see uh, this is the opening statement. And the end document command is the closing statement. So the begin document and end document command, this part of your code is known as the body. This is where you will be typing all the code that will make up your, your document or the content within your document. So as you can see, this text I typed in here, there is a percentage symbol in front of the text. When you add a percentage symbol in front of text, it comments that text out. So this text will not be executed with the rest of your code. And then in content, we can just type, this is my first LaTeX document. So before we can run this code, we first need to save the file. I already created a folder in which I'm going to save it. I'm just going to call the file tutorial. So when we do not add an extension, um, Tech Studio will save the file as a default .tex file. But when we add um, an alternative extension like .bib, it's going to save it as a .bib file. But if we do not add the extension, it will default just save it as with a .tex extension. So we can go ahead and click save. So you can see in the folder where I just saved the file, it saved it as tutorial and the type is a LaTeX document. Okay, now we can actually run the code. We click on build and view to build the document. We can just, since this is the first time I am using Tech Studio, we just click on do not show this message again and just click on OK. Then it will build our document for us. And you can see here that it is displaying that document it built for us. And in the folder we saved the file, you can see it created, as it executed the code, it created a bunch of additional files. So this is our PDF uh, file the PDF document and uh, I'm just going to open this up so you can see and this is the doc the PDF document we just created uh, I am using Foxit reader as my PDF viewer and as you can see that Tech Studio also has a built-in PDF viewer, which is how we are seeing the document right now. You can go ahead and click on windowed view. Then it will show your PDF document in another window. So this is especially handy for when you have multiple monitors on your computer. Then you can view your code on one monitor and your PDF document on another monitor. But for convenience in this video, I'm just going to go ahead and click on Embedded Viewer so that you can see the document I create right next to the code. If there are any errors in our code, the errors will show up in this message log here. But for now, I'm just going to close that. Okay, so we have the body of our document and any code we type in before the body of our document is known as the preamble. So this part is the preamble. 
and the preamble ends right before the body of the document. Now, what you, the code you want to insert, you are going to want to insert in the preamble is typically when you, when you set parameters of a document or you load packages, all that will come into your preamble. Okay, so we can continue typing some additional, you can see that it put the, this is my first LaTeX document in the first paragraph and you can create another paragraph and say this is the second paragraph when we run this you can see it updates the PDF document so it creates a new paragraph and as usual when we insert the percentage symbol in front of this it will assume this to be comment so it won't actually execute it with the rest of our code and you will see when we run this it will only end up with the first paragraph since it discards the commenting so we'll just cancel the commenting now we can create a new paragraph i already prepared a text document for this tutorial so i'm just going to copy and paste from my text document we can paste right, we can type the paragraph protons and electrons have charges of equal magnitude but opposite sign when we run this you'll see that it creates a third paragraph so the first line of every paragraph has an indentation which is why you will see the first, second and third paragraphs. The first lines are indented and then everything after that is just against the margin. So this text, protons and electrons, this is just normal text mode. And then here we, where we typed E equals 1.602, you can see that it is typed between dollar symbols. That is because any, any code you type between dollar symbols is placed in what is called math mode. You can see that the math mode has a bit of a different font and it is specifically used for when you want to typeset math. If we copy and paste the text we wrote in between the dollar signs into just normal text mode, you'll see that we should get an error. It doesn't recognize this command when it is not in between the dollar signs, with other words, in math mode. And you can also see that the error it displays in the message log. So this is very handy for when you want to, when you run your code and there are errors in it, and you can just go through it and cancel all the errors. So when we retype that same paragraph, just paste it again and we type in a double dollar sign before and after the text we want as math mode and we run it now you'll see that it puts the the math notation on its own paragraph and in the center so that's that's what the double dollar symbols do basically So if there are different commands for math mode, you can see that the frac command is for creating fractions. And then we can also type in the command begin and then equation if you want to create an equation. So you can see it automatically completed the closing statement for the begin equation command so in content we can just type in the equation y equals mx plus c and when we build this we'll see that it creates the equation that it also numbers for us there 
then we can also label equations so if I copy and paste the label and we refer to that equation in a paragraph you can see reference we reference this equation in that paragraph and we run this you'll see that it's it references the equation which we labeled and then we can continue we can type in additional paragraphs and equations with different math notation here we have a plus minus symbol and a square root okay but when we have an equation which is too long it will just simply run the edge of the page like you can see here it just goes off the document so in order to fit long equations over the page we can use the mold line command now you can see it gives us an error here in order to use the mold line command we need to load a certain package and the package we need to load is the math tools package so in order to load a package you simply type in the command use package all one word and then within the curl brackets you type the name of the package you want to load which in our case is math tools so this is the package we would need to load in order to run this code so if you run it now you'll see no more errors and we get an equation that is evenly spaced over three lines Packages are used to load special instructions for the computer. With packages you can add features that aren't included in the standard distribution. Your MIGTEC distribution comes pre-installed with most packages that are commonly used. And there are many packages and we will learn all about different kinds of packages and how to use them in future videos. We can also load another package, use package, and the package I want to load now is the Lipsum package. The Lipsum package is a package that provides the special command named Lipsum. So when we enter the command Lipsum and run our code, you will see that it creates some paragraphs. Now this text, Lorem Lipsum, is dummy text which has no meaning, however looks very similar to real text. This is handy for when you want to examine the borders of your page and see how the spacing of your words and the spacing between paragraphs look. You can see where the different paragraphs begin and end where the indentation is okay so we can also have some equations that are aligned so if I paste this code there you can see it aligns the equations at the equal sign now in this case it numbers every single one of the equations but if we do not want the numbering of the equations we can just simply add the star uh, after the aligned command so when we run this now we will see that it creates this aligned equations without the numbering okay so in addition to equations and mathematic notation we can also add some figures in order to do that we type in the command 
begin figure and if you press enter you will see that it also creates the closing statement end figure automatically now in here um, we type in the code where we load a figure or an image we want displayed on the page so in our folder I already I already inserted a picture of a cat so let's say we want to put this picture in our document you can see that this is a JPEG image in order to get this picture in our document we type in the command include graphics so in there we type in include graphics and in the first set of square brackets you type in the dimensions of the picture and in this case I want a width of 100 millimeters and in the second set of curl brackets you type in the directory of your image and as you can see our image is in the folder named pictures and then pictures and then the file name which is cat and dot jpg since we are dealing with a jpeg image so if we run this code now you'll see that our picture will be in our document now you can type in some additional code like centering which will just simply center the picture in the middle of your document and you can also caption and label your picture and in this case I'm gonna just gonna have a caption of grumpy cat and I'm just gonna label the picture and then after the begin and end figure command we can reference our picture in paragraphs and when we run this you will see figure one grumpy cat which is our caption and in a paragraph from figure one it is evident that the cat is grumpy okay and then we can also have tables not gonna say much about that I'm just gonna copy and paste the code you can see that it's quite lengthy code in order to have a table but you will never actually need to memorize the code most of the time you'll just copy and paste pre-existing code you maybe typed earlier in the document or in another document and paste it and then just edit it slightly to get your new um, table or image or whatever it is you want in your document in order to have that code to not give errors we need to load the package array and also color tbl and we also captioned and labeled our table so you can see the caption and it is also labeled in this paragraph okay and then one more thing I want to show is how to create some chemical structures and formulas and the package we would need in order to do that is the chemfig package and the code that would display some chemical structures we can just paste in there um, just need the forward slash in front of the chemfig command and when we run this you will see our organic chemical structure displayed there along with all the page numbering for every page six five four three two and one and then we can also create chapters sections and subsections 
So if we add the command, for example, there, we add the command chapter. And then in the curl brackets, we type in the name of the chapter we want. So I'm going to call this chapter introduction. So when we run this, you'll see that it creates the first chapter, chapter one introduction. Now we can create some more chapters. We can have a second chapter which we call mathematics then we can have a third chapter which we will call figure and we will have a fourth chapter which we will call table and we put it in front of our table there and we have a fifth chapter which we call chemistry which I'll put in front of our chemical structure and when we execute this code you will see all the different chapters it creates chapter 5 4 chapter 3 chapter 2 and chapter 1 so you can see that the spacing is not what one would normally desire usually you would want the chapter title and the image on the same page we'll discuss spacing in detail in future videos then in order to create a table of contents we just simply type in before our all the code of our body we just simply type in table of contents all one word and when we execute this code you'll see at the beginning of our document is our table of contents all our five chapters as well as the pages on which each of the chapters starts and we can also create a list of figures as well as a list of tables. And in our document, you will now see we have um, a list of tables. Since we only have one, we only inserted one table in our document, we will only show up one table in the list of tables as, and the same with figures. Okay, and then we can also further go and create sections and subsections as we want. So within this, we can just insert the command section, which we will call section as well as a subsection. Which I will just call subsection. And when we run our code, we'll see that under chapter one, we'll have our section, which will be named 1.1 and our subsection, which will be 1.1.1. And then this, sections and subsections will also be displayed in our table of contents. Now it's not displayed right now because we need to run our code a second time in order for some of the files to update. Now you will see that it has our section and subsection under chapter one in the table of contents. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes everything for this tutorial. This serves as a good introduction to LaTeX if you are completely unfamiliar with it. In future videos, I will look in detail at paragraphs and spacing 
and math notation, images, tables, chemical structures and everything you need in order to write a professional technical document as well as books. So thanks for watching, I will see you in the next video and remember always stay curious.